Hello everyone, I'm Dear Myrtle, your friend in genealogy, but you know that this channel's all about crafting journals to tell an ancestor story one episode at a time. Yesterday, I uh, worked through uh, making things from old book pages. In fact, we did uh, rectangles, triangles, and squares, and we wallpapered them. This is my little wallpaper <laughs> applicator, an old, um, actually, I think it's a room card, but you could use a credit card, whatever, to help spread the glue uh, between the book page and whatever it is you're wallpapering on top. I did go a step further, and I cr actually embellished the triangle. Uh, well, yeah, this is not a triangle, Mert. Come on. I can do the embellishment. I cannot name the shape. Anyway, I did this to show you that what we end up with the basic wallpaper is almost totally obliterated by whatever you use to embellish uh, on the um, front side. And we don't normally embellish until we actually are in the middle of a journal and then we know the theme is purple or the theme is red or something like that. So we want a lot of these base shapes wallpapered ready to go so we don't have to think we can just oh i know i need a tuck spot let's make it so that something can be tucked in here um, and we're using old scraps and in particular we're using old book pages um oh great now i see comments coming in and i haven't yet learned how to do that guys I'm like a little baby when it comes to live streaming. But thank you, Ross, for being here and also Heather. So what we're going to do today, I had promised folks yesterday, and I'm not here every day. We're just lucky. Um, let's see what happened to my camera. There we go. Yeah. Um, I, I thought I'd show you how to make this envelope pocket with a special kind of a closure. I'm not using sari silk or ribbon or anything like that. All I've done is take a little bit of the craft paper on each side of a bit of folded over and glued old book page. Now I'm planning then to only put glue on this portion so that I will easily be able to flip open this pocket where I might put some little treat some little additional part of the story for the grandchildren units of the family. All right, so um, let me, it's a little confusing all this stuff here, Mert. Let's just go ahead and apply the art glitter glue, which dries fairly quickly. And when we come back to it later, you'll see that it does the job. I'm always amazed at what glue does to paper to strengthen it. It's pretty amazing. Now, this has not been decorated. This still has not, I guess I could do it straight. This has not yet been decorated. This was a uh, paper uh, from a digi that I got from Roxy uh, Creations. That would be Rachel. And <clears throat> it was already an interesting collage, but it was in neutral tones. So eventually I could dress up some things on the side with a little bit of um, lace, although this is a heck of a lot of lace. It's whatever you end up needing for a particular journal in question. All right, so I'm going to leave this open to help the glue dry and we'll set this aside. Um, <laughs> hi, Ross. There has to be a way to bring in comments. I just don't know how. Do we just click on them? Yeah, we do. Oh my gosh, I'm learning how to do this. Ross says, oh, I managed to be awake and you're seeing this live. Thank you. She says, hi. All right. Um, and I guess we just click to hide it again. Okay. So I have some scrap paper. Uh, you may recognize that I used it uh, yesterday to make a cute little flowers. I had to do a bunch of circle punches. But anyway, <clears throat> we're going to take one sheet of old book page and apply the glue. And I like this fast drying glue, this art glitter glue. Because it's very thin, I can put a thin layer 
although I do put a lot. And actually, this paper is quite brittle. It's only from a 1986 publication. It was something I bought at, I keep saying Goodwill, but here, although we do have Goodwill, we have a thing called Deseret Industries. It's more um, prevalent here, very close by in our neighborhood. But that's where I buy these old books that are falling apart so that I can possibly use a spine or these old book pages that I do not have to um, tea dye or coffee dye. Although we have done that this week. All right. So I'm using what I call my wallpaper tool to actually press down so that you can see that the, there are no lumps. You can feel no lumps of the glue underneath. And this is, this is actually um, two-sided and it's cardstock. So it's pretty, uh, pretty good quality. But it's just what I had left in my stash. Let me move out slightly. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is um, take my scissors and trim this. Remember, our goal is to make that envelope kind of a pocket. Okay. I really do think it is worth buying the Tim Holtz scissors because this is something I could have taken to my cutter, which is on the table behind my chair. Um, but these cut very straight. I don't know why they work so well, but they do. Okay. So now we've got, oh, this is the opposite side. Now we've got the base for our envelope pocket. And we take it a little more than a third of the way up, fold. And then this, I'm going to fold it probably about here and not right against this so that if I decide to have a little tab or something sticking up with whatever I put inside the pocket, it won't interfere with this fold over flap. So keep that in mind if you have an idea what you're planning to put in. Now I just eyeball this, I don't score it, I just do it. Okay, let's see if I got it somewhat straight. I did, it's always a miracle when that happens. All right. Now, before I glue it or do anything, remember that this is old book page paper and that's fine. But how about if I put the contrasting fa uh, fabric, I'm always going to be saying that I'm just crazy. Forgive me. Um, it's a mix and match kind of fabric. I've got to be sure to get these um, tiger lilies in here. Um, it's always good to put this over the part that will be seen just from an aesthetic point of view, but also from the fact that as my grandchildren are continually opening and closing and pulling out the, um, the journaling card that may be in this envelope, it's good to have a little protection um, for the book page. The book page is just a base and it saves us having to measure. All right. Oh my gosh. Uh, Andy's here. Thank you for showing up. Let's see what he has to say. Um, <laughs> okay. Andy says, I've got this. So Andy's known me forever and a day, and he knows I love to experiment. And Ross is saying, it was fun watching the coffee dyeing. Oh, I had a blast doing that with Heather uh, the other day. She did it in her kitchen. I did it in mine. And uh, it was all good. All right. Gee, I want to get this in up here, don't I? So I'm going to have to cut some of this off. Let's do it. I would could use my guillotine. All right. Let's see if this is going to fit. Yeah. All right. And it goes not quite down to the fold below. That's okay. But I really want that, um, the tiger lily to show up. Wiggle room, that's the thing. Yes, that's what we would call it. Thank you very much, Andy. All right, so 
since I'm not quite sure how far down this comes, I'm going to put the glue on the back of this and we will um, adhere it. There was a lot of color on the opposite side of this. Um, and I had to focus on what would match with this very bold red. All right, and it may not have gone up high enough. We'll find out in a minuet. Stick it in there. The tricky thing about art glitter glue is that you basically have one chance to set it down because it dries very quickly. I can't think of another word for this process except wallpapering, except it's book page papering to be more precise. Okay, now we're adding the glue, the part that I missed. And next we will have the decision to make as to whether or not we want to round the edges after I cut this off. And I tend to round the edges because it seems friendlier. I don't know. Let's compare. Okay, and this has got to be folded down. Yep, I can just barely feel the previous fold. Let's use our bone scorer thing to help me make a good fold there. All right, so which do you like better? The square edge? or the rounded edge? <laughs> I don't know, let me know what you think. Now, admittedly, I haven't um, inked this. So let me add a little ink on the edging to make it a little more prominent. See if it helps you decide. And I will do what you ask me to do. I'm not always as cooperative, just ask Mr. Merck. Okay, now there's a little definition there. I think I'm going to go for the circle, the the um, the rounded edge. Okay, put the lid on my distress ink. It's called Vintage Photo from Ranger. And this is the device I use to cut my uh, corners. There's a half inch corner and a quarter inch corner. So you can, it's really two rounded corners in one. And because I have a lot of um, frustration here, I'm working on that thumb to calm it down. I just put it on my work surface and punch it. Put it on my work surface and punch it. Okay. Now I might have liked to use an even darker um, ink. Let's try black, see if it shows up a little bit better. Because I like that we had some definition here by adding that ink on the edges. But you know what? There's no right or wrong to this. It's what you want to do. That's the fun of this paper crafting stuff. And I got it. Oh yeah, that shows up nicely. I got to tell you that my grandkids are really cute about it. When I have a journal, which I make every week, a different journal for a different ancestor story. Last week it was to go with my dad's 50 year pin from his medical school. He was still practicing medicine. The rest of his 50th year of, um, since he graduated. Anyway, my grandkids are like getting excited. They all but one have a cell phone. The youngest one's just barely 10. Got to trim that, don't I? Just a little bit. Uh, so what I do is I send a text message with the link to my video here on Merch Journal. There are the, those particular stories are um, recorded here. That looks nice. Let me finish the edging. And I'll tell about the artifact, what I know about the person, and I actually read the little journal to the grandkids because they can't come over 
this darn COVID thing. And sometimes I'll say, this is how, uh, you know, because of this, the great grandpa Glenn did, um, we are, this is why tannin is so good with woodworking or something along that line. And then Tannen will text me back and say, thanks for the shout out, Grandma. Now, any genealogist, any grandma loves it when they can, or grandpa, uh, when they can get some interaction with the grandchildren type people. Okay. I think it's inked pretty well. So, so what I used this time was an old, old black um, uh, dye ink pad. What I normally use, I think I've got one that isn't all messed up, is the Distress Oxide from Ranger. Okay. Now, we can also decide if we want to make a little divot here, like I spoke about yesterday with Cousin Russ. But I think, well, I guess I could. This is the time to do it before you actually glue things down. Let me see if I can find a nice big, <clears throat> can't find one. Well, we'll just do it with this one inch punch. I like doing it with a little bit bigger punch. And I tend to use it, what I think of as upside down. And I just eyeball it. So let's figure this out. And I make it pretty shallow. I used to go way, you know, like two thirds of the way in. Doesn't look right. I'm learning this stuff. And there we go. All right, so we're going to have to touch up that black because I've cut it away. <clears throat> um, so Heather, you know, oh, thank you, Andy, for stopping by. I appreciate your being here. You know how um, Cousin Russ always has such interesting questions to ask when he's on your show? He had a few for me last, uh, or yesterday afternoon when we did uh, my other recording. So to make the rest of this, all we need to do is take our very firm art glitter glue and put a good bit of the art glitter glue on each side so that it will close this particular envelope mm -hmm. a little bit over the edge there um that's what we do that's how you make it it's very easy so you basically wallpaper for sure one side the whole way so that the um, paper wraps down across the back and up this way now when we were dealing with this pattern, which was a collage, we didn't have to deal with lettering that had to appear a certain way. But if I had used this from my stash and taken it up, the lettering goes a certain way. Got to be sure that your lettering looks reasonable and that it's not upside down. But they didn't have to worry about it here. Okay, I do tend to use some of these really tight um <laughs> there we go it's a kind of a paper clip but it's circular to help keep this all down when i first made it and shall we go back and look at our original and see how it works okay goodbye good day <laughs> oh i hear you all right so we have our um our journal and you can see I made this quite deep and it only overlapped about three quarters of an inch so I can put an assortment of things in here no problemo but all we need to do is just lift this slightly and slip that under and now we have a very interesting easy to make inexpensive and otherwise marvelous item to close we could have used two magnets we could have used sari silk to wrap around we could have taken a bit of of ribbon from one side and used eyelets um, ribbon from the other side tied it in between those are our two 
envelope pockets. And there's nothing left to say, but thank you for joining us today and happy family tree climbing and journal making everyone. That's a wrap. <laughs>